Hello and welcome to Film Seizure. We are in week three of Spooky Month. Um, we are doing our third spooky movie. Uh, but first, I'd like our to third, introduce... It's our third spooky remake, no less. Yes. Yeah, third spooky... That, that was Jeff Arbuckle. Say hi, hey, to hi, Jeff Arbuckle. Hi, Jeff Arbuckle. Yes. And then we also have Jason. Hello, hello Jason. Hello, hello. I'm feeling very spooky. Spooky. Today. Yeah, We're so for a third Halloween, w- spooky. Yeah, what do we have? One week till Halloween, two weeks? Like, yeah. And I think it's I one mean, week. We could, we could do the Halloween three music. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to edit that in. No, one. Well, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> because um, that's the this easy week- joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just edit in the original Halloween music. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the. Uh, the movie we're doing this week is a remake of an old man and his realtor. That's what it's called, right? An old man. Yes, and his an realtor. old man and his realtor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, no. It's, it's described this movie as boring as possible. <laughs> yes. Nosferatu, the vampire, otherwise known as Nosferatu, creature of the night, and Nosferatu, nineteen seventy nine. All of those are the Werner Herzog's version with Klaus Klaus Klaus, Klaus? With Klaus Kinski as with Nosferatu. Clown, with, with, Klaus with, with, with Clown Klinky. Clown Klinky. Clown Klinky. Yes, a that's, remake that's, that's, of of F. W. Murnau's. Um, when did he make that movie? I was going to say nineteen twenty. Nineteen twenty two. Nosferatu: A Symphony of Horror. Yeah. Um, and F.W. Murnau's uh, version is kind of like often pointed to as like between that and um, uh, Cabinet of Dr. Caligari mm-hmm. are kind of pointed to as the German expressionism movies. However, I mean, there's plenty. There's a bunch more. I mean, yeah. there's 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 like 15 years of of um, of expressionism movies, but those are the two that that became the most famous. Um, and I do want to correct myself. I said creature of the night. I meant phantom of the night. My oh, yeah. yeah. Nosferatu phantom der Nacht. Phantom der Nacht. I took German in, uh, in um, high school and middle school. So how's that? Interesting. They didn't even offer that in my school. That's weird. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, uh, maybe it's an Indiana thing because there was a lot of German people here in Indiana. Probably it's founded by Germans, right? I think pretty so. Much or pretty much. I mean, like there's, there's German clubs all over the state. So, you know, anyway. Um, yeah. So this is, um, I don't know if the, all of the visuals necessarily would fall right into that German expressionism for this version. Certainly the acting style does. Um, and most people also are mistaken. In the fact that German expressionism is only the visuals, it is not. Um, there are uh, acting styles that are considered part of that expressionism era. Um, and I think that's really probably more than anything what Werner Herzog is going for here is the, yeah, is the and it, style, and it, not necessarily the visuals, because this is I think, this is a wholly um, different looking movie than than any of those expressionism movies. I think I think what he's accentuating in the remake is the anti-realism. The um the uh what's the word? Um but yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's it's the drama. It's it's the the it's not a it's not meant to be like this this realistic movie. Um a lot of Dracula movies try to get a little bit into the realism of things. It's kind of what Coppola's film tried to do a little bit was make it very, you know, very realistic. Um, and I don't think that um, Herzog is, is attempting that at all here. He's, he's definitely, he's definitely leaning into more of that non-realistic anti-realism of the, of the, the expressionist period. Yeah. And um, it's, uh, I, yeah, I, let's just throw this out there right now. This is, an extraordinarily good looking movie, Mm -hmm. but in a very weird way, 
I think this movie is almost completely and totally devoid of life. Um, and, and this is really kind of a nightmare sort of movie. It's cold. I mean, like at one point, uh, the, the, you know, Jonathan and Lucy go to the beach where they've mm-hmm. met and fell in love and they look miserable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, the beach looks miserable. It looks cold. There's nobody there. It, yeah. it looks cold. It looks dreary. It looks just, just not comfortable. It yeah. looks dead. It looks but dead. The, but the, it's shot beautifully. Oh yeah. Oh, the, that's the, and, and, and the, and the image still conveys like a, a young couple in love, but, with, but, with, but with, with a dread. tinge, but with a tinge of a tinge of dread. Yes. A tinge of, there's dread off of impending coast. doom. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, Lucy looks dead the moment you meet her. Yeah. She, she looks is, completely drained of blood. She's very she, porcelain. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of funny because uh, my brain did a funny thing when I was watching this. I was like, man, that looks like Isabella Johnny. And then I looked it up <laughs> and I was like, it is. <laughs> I mean, Good job, brain. <laughs> yeah. I, all right. I mean, <laughs> you, you just realized that this time around, Jeff? No, no. I forgot that that's who <laughs> okay. is playing Lucy. And I was like, man, that looks like Isabella Johnny. <laughs> And yeah, sure enough. (laughs) Isabel Ajani, of course, like for American audiences, she's probably most known for this and for... um, Ishtar. Yeah, I guess Ishtar. Um, Mm -hmm. I was going to say Zulawski's Possession uh, is probably one that she's very, very well known for. Uh, Uh, Especially her performance in that was, I think... Um, I think she won Best Actress at Cannes for that performance. And she was nominated for an Oscar for, um, was it um, Claudel? Uh, Claude, um, the, Camille Claudel. That's it. That's Is that it. the, um, uh, which French director made that? Um, yes, that might be, that might be the, the role that made her a star, actually. In Europe, especially. No, that was much later. Was it? You're what thinking of her it? '70s movie, the um, the one that um, Truffaut did. Oh, Truffaut, yes, the story of Adele H. Yep, that's what I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she won lots of foreign awards for that. Oh yeah, she was also in uh, Polanski's The Tenant. I tend to forget that. That's a yeah. Good she uh, she she uh, requested. Uh, she signed a uh, thing asking for all charges to be dropped against Polanski. It's like, Ooh, that's, that's a dicey position to take. But yeah, okay. especially like, yeah, what do you really know, right? Um, uh, um, but anywho, that's not for this episode. Um, but she's, she's great in this. Um, I, I think she's my favorite Lucy, honestly, in, in any version of, what? of Dracula. But the thing, I should also so say funny, Lucy slash Mina because yeah, those, gonna, those yeah, characters get yeah. transposed I'm a lot. Here for a minute yeah. because that is one of the most commonly transposed mm-hmm. things ever from from book to movie. Mm-hmm. Is um, uh, like I don't know what it is that people have it out against Mina, yeah. but like all of the most popular versions of Dracula, except for one, two technically. The BBC uh, miniseries from the 70s and Coppola's seems to either just rename her or switch her around or they, mm-hmm. you know, um, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know if they just think that, I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's the name. I, I don't know, but it's weird. I, I just don't think they know what to do with it in the confines of a feature film. Well, yeah, because the thing is, is that the Lucy character in the book and in more faithful adaptations, she's got like four dudes lined up waiting to court her. And that's an actual big part of the story because those four dudes end up joining in on the fight against the monster because they're taking up the, 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 you know, but anyway, if you focus in on just the Jonathan Harker and the Mina character, that makes a lot of sense. You can cut out the Lucy character or at least most of her stuff and just leave her as a friend of, of Mina. But the, but yeah, I, 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 why they changed it for this uh, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Like the original, and I should also mention that the original Nosferatu, the 22 version um, is real 
slippery with names because oh, yeah. because they didn't have the rights right so they couldn't so they they you know they're not called jonathan and mina or lucy mm-hmm. or helsing or um uh, um renfield or any in fact um a lot of those major characters like van helsing in both versions of nosferatu are extraordinarily downplayed mm-hmm. to the fact where he almost becomes instead of the guy who knows what to do, he becomes an impediment to what needs to happen. Um, and in this one could argue that he does have more than Dracula's blood on his hands uh, because he wouldn't, he was too strict in he needs to figure out the science of why. Everything's oh, well, happening. we'll, we'll talk about Van Helsing, I think uh, quite a bit later. Um, but yes, it is a very interesting take on Vel- Van Helsing. This this um, this version, I should mention that um, Mina in this version is played by Marcia Groman, who was married to uh, Werner Herzog for uh, about eighteen years. They were married, um, so that's kind of just an interesting factoid for you. But but yes, our our principal female lead in this is Lucy, the character Lucy, played by um, Isabella. Najani. Um, we also have uh, Bruno Gans, who plays Harker. Bruno Gans is probably most known, I would say probably most known to American audiences for his work with Wim Wenders. He was um, most famously, I think, in um, Wings of Desire. He was the lead, the lead angel. The role that was remade by um, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then um, he was also he's probably you know you know the famous meme like one of the earliest memes was like people would would re-edit the subtitles from that movie Downfall with Hitler. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, he he was Hitler. Yeah. Bruno Gans was. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, <clears throat> he's in a lot of stuff. He is in a lot of stuff, but those are probably the things that most people wouldn't re- would recognize. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was reading for like for like fifty three years or something. He held on to like an award that was was bequeathed him as like the top um, uh, Swiss actor or whatever. And then yeah, uh, he he and then of course he had to give it over to somebody else when he died. Huh. But yeah, it's a weird thing. But like it's kind of like when somebody gives it to you, it's yours for life. That's interesting. Weird. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I, I was just reading about that. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Um, huh. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, uh, um, it, it's, uh, yeah, he's, um, he's really good in this and kind of a, everything about this movie is kind of understated in mm-hmm. some way. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also very sleepy. But I mean that in a really good way, mm-hmm. because this is kind of like a nightmare. For sure. I mean, the movie starts with images of real mummies, right? Yeah. I mean, it sets a, a pretty immediate tone. But what I love about that is it almost that tone is almost immediately undercut in a way <laughs> by the presence of all the kittens and Lucy, you know, playing with her kittens and holding a kitten while she's like pleading with Jonathan not to leave. <laughs> right. Um. So it's interesting. It's it's like this. There's this sort of life and death balance, I guess, at the beginning of this film that very quickly tips to one side. <laughs> but then, though, I mean, it it uh, it never stays in anything bright and happy for very long. No, no. And there's uh, very few instances of anything bright or happy. Yeah, um, yeah. It's. Uh, it, it, yeah, it, it's kind of, it's a funny movie to kind of talk about because it's like everything is the movie is not only it, it, it carefully takes its time to go from one thing to the next, but at the same time, it also, it starts really fast, mm-hmm. you know, because, and that's kind of one of the connecting tissues of all three movies that we've covered this month is how fast everything gets going. I mean, like it's, we're, um, 
you know, it, it's it's less than ten minutes in. He's getting he's getting the job from uh from Renfield. Um, what did I call him earlier? Giggle pants something. I don't know, anyway, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Roll, Roland Topor. He is very uh, Renfield. He's very damn giggly to start with this movie. He's, <laughs> he's already, already obviously got. Yeah. Yeah, this is not this is not a Renfield who has been slowly corrupted. Um, he's he's pretty much working for for Dracula from the start here. Yep. Yeah, and I mean some of that is maybe contextually there in the Dracula sure. novel. Sure. Um, because again, I mean that starts very quickly with with Jonathan traveling mm-hmm. east. Um, but yeah, this is, um, he's almost, I mean, giddy, of course, because he's giggling every other word, but like he's, he is, he is tearing Jonathan away from his life. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's, he knows he's sacrificing him. He warns him. He literally warns him. Like you're going to have to give your blood for this. Yeah. Yeah, it's really kind of weird that Jonathan Harker is like, okay, well, sounds like, great. Well, I'll leave immediately. <laughs> it's very, it's very much a, it's very much a, um, you know, young professional trying to do anything to stand out uh, for their employer to do a, a job well done. You know, it's he and he doesn't he doesn't realize that that's not a metaphor, <laughs> right? I mean, right. Blood, <laughs> blood, I don't know. Maybe blood, sweat, and tears was something people said that long ago, but obviously that's how he took it, right? Like, right. right. I'm gonna oh, have yeah, to work real for hard sure. for this. I'm gonna yeah. have to work real hard on this. And um, but we already see when he leaves to go to work that day that he is way focused on work because like mm-hmm. he gets up um and uh i can't remember exactly what lucy's doing i don't know if she's like going to like i think she's going to go to hug him and kiss him goodbye and he just blows right past her and he's he's not even paying attention to her mm-hmm. and yet you know when he's at work you know and 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 uh and giggle pants is saying that you know, it's like this is going to be a big raise for you, a big commission for you. And a new house. The very first thing he thinks yeah. of is, is oh, I want to move Lucy out of the city. Mm-hmm. And he's so it's kind of funny because it's like whenever he's at home, he's not thinking about home. Right. He's well, he's it, almost a. That's kind of an eternal theme, though, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, very much. And and I think probably even more so in this time period. You know, there was no work life balance. <laughs> in what right. the 17th century is that when this is um uh, 18 it's uh 19th century yeah then you live to, live to work you didn't work to live right right like and a good job is life. one is one to to hold on to yeah, yeah. And, and and a lot of times you know you're when you learn a profession like that it's it's an apprenticeship that is it does consume your entire life you your your whole purpose is to become that thing right yeah yep yeah. Well, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, to the point where it even becomes, I mean, that's your identity yeah, right. too. I mean, we see that a lot in this where it's like, you know, I mean, um, when we do meet Van Helsing later, his, his identity is he's the, he's the medical guy in town. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, um, yeah, it's, it, everybody is kind of, um, uh, uh, they're a monolith of what they are, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever. So, yeah. Um, and we should, should mention here real quick that, um, this takes place. And what's, what's kind of interesting about this, cause of course, Dracula is, uh, a, originally a British story, you know, it's, it's bringing the guy from Transylvania to London. This mm-hmm. takes place in Wiesmar, Germany, which is, um, interestingly is i think that this uh was filmed in wiesmar but that is actually at the time was an east german city it was most the, of most of that um city is actually um the city of delft in holland mm. okay yeah i thought i saw that actually some of it was filmed there were there. several locations but most of the most of the that home is, is, oh is delft. okay no, I see. I see where I'm getting confused. Uh, Herzog couldn't film in Wiesmar. That's mm. where F.W. Murnau filmed. And so, okay, gotcha. 
All right. But anyway, but if you think about that, that is a incredibly long journey to go by water, Mm. which is what has to happen later, which, um, I mean, now granted Jonathan's traveling through the continent, but when, when Dracula is leaving Transylvania and coming to his new property, he's going through the black sea, through the Mediterranean around the Atlantic and up to the Baltic. Your geography a, is a lot better than mine. That's a long, <laughs> long ass way to go. I mean, he basically well, the, circumvents Europe. That's what there. allows Jonathan on a four week trip to, to get back in time, to get back in time. Yeah. yeah. Cause it took him four weeks to go through the Carpathians and all that yep. garbage, which I'm sure we'll talk about soon. <laughs> um, I want to mention too, that um, while Herzog is clearly making a remake and he does remake specific mo- movements, shots. Um, he doesn't really consider this a very faithful remake and he didn't, he didn't set out to make a faithful remake. What he really wanted to do was kind of reclaim for himself his, his German filmmaking identity. Um, a lot of the German filmmakers of his era did not have any connection to their forefathers because they were Nazis, right? To really go back to their, their German roots and to, to artistic filmmakers that they admired, they had to go back to the Expressionist era, right? So it was Lang and Murnau and, and others that were their, their heroes and that who they wanted to, to emulate and, and make, honestly, just continue on the, of, of that tradition in some way. So he, he, Herzog felt that he, he was never a German filmmaker until he could kind of pay his dues in that way. So that's what this movie did for him was allow him to connect. And it, it felt like watching it too, even though it wasn't super, super faithful. It, I mean, obviously Nosferatu was very similar to the Murnau Nosferatu, but it felt like he was mm-hmm. giving the characters back to that version. Almost like, they couldn't use these characters. They couldn't use Dracula. They couldn't mm-hmm, sure. mm-hmm. do any of this. So yeah. it seemed like almost a gift of giving it back yeah. in, a, in some ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, the big difference in this, though, is the character of Dracula. Yeah, Orlok is a monster. Yeah, Dracula is somewhat sympathetic. You, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's kind of funny because like nobody reacts to count dracula like right. they should <laughs> yeah. um but his, his fangs his claws yeah he's a freaking monster man mm-hmm. you know yeah. um i want to clarify one thing i said real quick if you don't mind yeah i meant the look of not Nosferatu was like almost spot on it oh yeah like oh yeah 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 i mean and, and it, Nosferatu doesn't speak at all in the original mm-hmm. even in the text right he never says a thing or does he uh, I can't remember now. I don't remember. He didn't have a lot of speaking, even though it was a silent film. You know what I mean. He, I mean, he, he definitely communicates with say. Harker. <laughs> he definitely communicates with Harker, you know, because the the relationship is still the same. Um, right. But but I don't I don't know how much he actually says. Yeah. Um, yeah and sorry, yeah, I mean, they go out of their way. You know, they, there are moments where 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 Herzog's direction goes out of his way to make sure that Kinski's poses are 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 Shrek's poses like when, especially when he comes into Harker's bedroom in the door frame that barely mm-hmm. fits him yeah. and yeah. on the ship. It's very similar. Yes, to, I think. Some, yes yeah. for sure. But there, but he also, um, he wanted to bring a lot more humanity to, to that character as well. So he, he did like put a lot of more emotion into, into the character. It's a good yeah. idea also that they, that he didn't reshoot the silhouette going up the stair. That's, don't don't do that. Don't, yeah. I mean that's that belongs to the original. Yeah. Nobody should try to do that. His version they, of that was kind of like in the in the square with the shadow al- along the building. Yes. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in the bathroom when he when he goes to Lucy the first time. That's oh. one of the most fucking genius things I've ever seen. It's, it's awesome. Unbelievable. I, I spent a long time thinking about it. Like, how yeah. did they do this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, I think we should probably also talk about the, the soundtrack to this. Mm, yes. Because. Pop- Popple Yeah. And it's, um, there is a, 
droning element to it. And does that actually come from the uh, from the Wagner? Uh, I think the, it depends sustain, on when. Uh, because like the one of the things about that that um, prelude to that to um, the Rheingold is the mm-hmm. sustained note right. that, that plays and and you I, feel that through this movie yes um, and there are times where it drones almost like a um, they do a good job of blending the two throughout yeah. the popovol and the and the um the wagner um but generally speaking like a lot of the more happy sounding stuff is is the the more uh, um i guess triumphant stuff is the the popovol um, other than, I guess, when Rheingold kind of crescendos, right? Right. And there are two moments where it really crescendos. It's when he's, um, when Harker is on his journey mm-hmm. to the castle and also when um, the ship has has lost its captain. Those are like yeah. the two kind of moments where that's my favorite really scene in the movie. <laughs> the, which one? The, 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 the ship? ship? Well, the ship the comes ship into into harbor or yeah. into the, the canal. It's fucking yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's also my favorite version of that. Cause that's an almost every Dracula movie and it's, that's my favorite version. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, but no, there is this kind of, I mean, the, 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 the soundtrack is, is ever present without taking over anything. Mm-hmm. Um, now, except for those crescendos, but that's, you know, um, there are other times in which other music plays like when the when the one child is playing the mm-hmm. violin um which is creepy for a lot of reasons yeah yeah um, I, that's one part that kind of eludes me <laughs> is there was is that that kid the violin playing kid um yeah i mean i don't know what, if why he's there at all um well i think i know why he's there i think he's i think he's essentially a blood cow Maybe, yeah. I don't, um, I mean, I don't, I, it, honestly, because in a way, he kind of to me, he kind of represents the thing that's in the, uh, in the in the more faithful Dracula adaptations, the bringing the baby to the brides. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. You know that it was that. I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's supposed to infer that there are other vampires in there or if it's dracula's snack also by the way dracula gives <laughs> snack, snack. Yeah. you mean the like food snack right snack. yes yeah, food snack. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's just because he's just a little guy i mean barker's a big old you know adult you know um it's like eating a bite-sized snickers um although wow. renfield is is uh is full-size snickers <laughs> he's something he is. <laughs> He's not. He is a fruitcake. Um, but anyway, so the. Uh, but also, uh, there's the other scene in which um, Dracula is, is is feeding Jonathan, and at one point he's got watermelon. It's like, where the fuck is he getting that watermelon from? Wow. Oh, yeah. and grapes. I did yeah. spend. I did spend a weird amount of time during this movie thinking about how is this shit getting here? Like that food. Like I was like watermelon. <laughs> I want. I want to see. The, I want to see the scenes of of Dracula working the the fields. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he must have. Obviously, he can. He can probably grab someone from anywhere with his mind power hours to bring him any fruits he wants. Maybe that's right what because the little he's boy operating is over for. hundreds of miles. Maybe. Yeah, to play violin and bring fruits. Yeah, it's like, hey, kid. Go, I mean, I'm get, serious. His, go to the store. Powers, give me a watermelon. His powers of su- suggestion are insane for how yeah, far that, he can send them. And, and that's a little bit of an invention, too. Um, especially his connection with Lucy is, a, is a very much an invention of, of Herzog. That's another thing that's interesting about, about Herzog in this movie is that the only version of Dracula... He had ever seen, I think he'd maybe seen um, a version that Polanski made, um, not of Dracula, but of a vampire movie, not, not the fearless vampire uh, killers, but another one. Um, but the only like Dracula story he'd ever seen was Murnau's. He'd never seen the Delgosi version. He'd never seen any other version. So he was working really with just his knowledge of, of the original Nosferatu and the, and the, and the book and then inventing his own spin. 
I do have a question based on something you just said, uh, being a Herzog invention, because obviously Lucy in Nosferatu, and her character name's not Lucy, whoever she is, she knows Dracula is coming. Mm-hmm. Like she has premonitions about him. Are you mm-hmm. saying that she didn't have a connection to him in her mind? No, like, I'm, I'm saying honestly I'm, curious. I'm saying that's not something that was really explored in any other version, in in, in original version. That's like a connection. Yeah, other than I'm saying, I'm saying the idea, I, the I concept of that in Herzog's film is Herzog brought that to it's his, his original right. Right, it's uh, Lucy does that in Nosferatu too. She in the, knows in the original. Yeah, she knows that he's coming. She's standing out at the the water, mm-hmm. waiting for him to show up. She has premonitions, at least the way I remember it. And I just mm-hmm. watched it, but I, I could re- be wrong. I don't remember. Yeah, forget it. You're probably I I, right, at no. least in the psychic. I didn't. Maybe I didn't, she I didn't just think has it per- would, I didn't think it was that overt, but maybe. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll tell you what. In a week and a half, I'll tell everybody if that was really <laughs> part of it or not. Sure. How's that? I love so, it. Uh, but no, I mean, as far as like the Dra- like Bram Stoker and other versions of Dracula, um, Dracula has to engage somebody before they have that psychic link. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the way I remember it. And I've only watched Nosferatu and this recently. So that's a new kind of discovery for me yeah. in these films. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And, and part of that is also, I mean, there is, uh, I think that some of that also can play into the idea of what Nosferatu or Dracula in this case represents versus what Lucy is supposed to represent in, in terms of like, a demon and an angel and a, and that's that connection of, of being kind of ethereal kind of gives them that is probably what my uh, suspicion that Herzog was kind of going for. Yeah. And I think you're right. There, there, the, that premonition scene is still, is still present in both versions where she has the dream and she, and she senses her husband in danger. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But, it, but Herzog takes uh, yeah, it a, a little bit further. Yeah. I yeah. agree with that. I was clarifying. I was trying to challenge your. No, idea. no, you're and fine. Th- no, it's you know, it's good. We want to be accurate. And I think it's cool too how you mentioned early on that the first two scenes are like life and death, right? Mm-hmm. There's a balance of life and death, mm-hmm. and that's Lucy in in Count Dracula the entire movie. Mm-hmm. Their life and death, even though she mm-hmm. looks dead the entire time, she is the balance for yeah. Count Dracula, right? In, in yeah, a lot of ways. it's it's interesting that you know the paleness of her character. I mean, I understand why it's interpreted as as death, but right. what I think Herzog was more going for was um, purity. Purity, purity. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. Because she always. I think that white comes through. As well, yep. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And that description of who is needed to lull Dracula mm-hmm. is someone yeah. who's pure of heart. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, yeah, and. Uh, it, there's there are some points in which Dracula doesn't look as pale anymore either. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, oh my god, there's one shot. I know it's not what it is, but I can't help but to see it. When when Dracula arrives in Vismar and um Renfield has escaped from the institution, institution and he goes to see Dracula, and Dracula tells him you know, hey, take the plague rats to um, uh, what's the other town that he tells them to go to? Anyway, he tells them to take the plague rats to another town, and, and uh, Renfield is like, like so happy, like he, he's like almost sobbing that he's so happy, and he's like he he's treating Dracula almost like a religious figure or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Dracula looks away, but it looks like. Klaus Kinski kind of rolls his eyes like, oh, <laughs> God, this guy. Oh, go away. Go to this other town. <laughs> well, he gives him the talk to the hand when he shows up, too. So he's totally like, he's I like, don't want I do pie. want. <laughs> yeah. So I, don't, oh, I don't want your shit right now, dude. Right. <laughs> um, I do want to mention one thing because I thought it was super cool. When Harker is leaving the town, 
to go through the Carpathians and mm-hmm. stuff. Like he's going one way, and I know this is because he's going uphill, but the way the water is rushing against them, it's like it wants to get the fuck out of there yeah. too. Right. Like yeah. everything is going the other way except for Harker. It's super cool. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, let, let's get to that because um I know Jason, this is your favorite segment or it's one of, one of my favorites yeah, yeah. Um, so for sure. yeah, so he gets to uh the little town right off of the borgo pass mm-hmm. and um i like that this town is essentially all inside one building yeah it, these are these are real gypsies it's a real town um it's i'm a, sorry they Jason, speak in it's their romani. own language it's romani well uh, yes yes uh, sorry um <laughs> preferred vernacular is romani um, they call them gypsies in the movie though yes 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 um, right and that's i mean and and that is all i mean that's all from the yeah. original text too yeah. it is um especially like the, the <laughs> i always think of is it for young frankenstein that does the kind of like record scratch you know where um and not a record scratch but that moment where like everybody looks at the character who wants to like go to the castle or whatever. Yeah. Like that, it's, you know? uh, yeah. Cause he goes in, he's like, yeah, my name is, uh, I think he, he like, he but you know what the, I mean? It's, it's right. like, it's like that stupid cliche now in movies where the record scratch noise happens. And then everyone looks at the person who like right. walked in. Yeah. It's like, it, there's that moment in this movie. <laughs> I wish I had the time or inclination to, to cut this as a comedy trailer. <laughs> Because I would totally do it at that point. I mean, I mean, there's already yeah. You could put the record scratch sound right, effect exactly. in there and everything. It'd be perfect. If you've yeah. got a duck in a basket, which I love, it just all feels like that that interior life. There's just these these layers of detail, but also right. like these really incongruent human reactions. You know? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And um, but anyway, so like he he's there and he you know he gets a meal, he gets a place to stay for the night. The next day, he's like, I'm ready to go to the Borgo Pass. And he talks to the guy at the carriage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like, um, yeah, I want to, I want to, you know, hitch a ride to the Borgo Pass. I'll pay handsomely. And the guy's like, there's no road. And he's like, but it's right there. Mm-hmm. And he's like, um, take me in your carriage. I'll, I will pay you. And he's like, I don't have a carriage. Then yeah. let me have one of your horses. I'll I don't have double. any horses. Yeah. Can't you see? He even says, can't you see? I don't even have any horses. And he's yeah, brushing a freaking horse. It's like crazy gaslighting, right? I mean, it's. Oh, yeah. 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 It's like, no, the, like the guy does not want to take you. <laughs> no, and he doesn't want to help you. I mean, he's trying to help you by not helping you. <laughs> right. And so Jonathan's like, all right, screw it. I'm off on foot. And um, yeah, well, is- I think he says something like, well, I guess I'll I guess I'll walk then, you know, and it's interesting because it's another moment of resolve. It's it's a, it's a moment of resolve that I think is paralleled by Lucy later um, that I find really interesting. Um, but it's an opposite. It's in diametric um, purposes. Right. right. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. And when he's walking through, first and foremost, I feel like there, there's something quaint about the uh, about that region like the Mm. the you know walking along those multiple waterfalls in that little path that you know it's got like even a little railing or like a little Mm. rope railing or whatever it doesn't feel like someplace like that exists on this planet yeah it's almost like he's crossing over into a different world or Mm -hmm. something and I mean, it's almost like the rails are, are the one thing that kind of take me out of it, you know, because the uh, rails almost feel like modern. Well, um, I mean, they are made out of rope and, and wood. So right, I mean, right. it's like, fair. it's not that's fair. I, think, yeah, I, mean, I, thought there I saw metal, the dog. There's leash. some metal rails in there. I thought, but yeah, the dog leash. I was like, wait a minute. That looks like an actual leash and not rope. That, that there was like was some on. metal rails. I thought in the, in the cave that he walks through. Maybe, Maybe. Um, probably, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's this still movie, cool. This it movie sucks. Cool. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's a terrible movie. We're done. Well, um, that, 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 was, a, that was a place that Herzog was familiar with from his youth. He 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 said. Could he grew you imagine, up not far from there. like, hey, this is where I go and play on Saturdays? Yeah, yeah. You you know that well, you, know, you know that he he never saw a movie until he was like fifteen. He um he said did, insane, did he, this is one of just, the craziest things I've, I've I think I've heard him say, and he said a lot of crazy things. <laughs> he made his he made his first phone call when he was 17 years old. Phone call. He made his first movie when he was 19. That's insane. That's insane. And, and, yeah. 
And I mean, what did he do for the first 15 years of his life while he wasn't watching movies? Like keep morose journals or something? (laughs) Probably. (laughs) I will say one thing though, Jeff, I mean, and this is no disrespect on Indiana because there's cool places here too. Oh, sure. But I, I grew up on Niagara Falls. Well, so I saw fantastic shit like every day. So, I mean, I get what you're saying, but those places do. I guess well, it didn't, yeah. maybe didn't carry the same weight for me because I'm used to seeing well, stuff I like mean, that. And when but I it's say still that cool. It, I mean, I, I really, it kind of goes back to the, to the quaintness idea, right? Like here's undisturbed, place, undisturbed area nature, of earth. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it's like, there are waters running freely. Yes. There is that little trail where horses can go or whatever sure somebody's but, bottling that shit today i'm sure oh right? yeah i'm sure yeah. that there's I'm sure that or there's something like a, <laughs> there's probably a horse factory right Carpathian next to crystal yeah. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> but um the, we got a, uh, a side hustle now maybe yeah, i know right <laughs> but no it's like but there's a part of that area which is interesting because it's the most alive that the movie looks. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's very green. It's yeah. The sun's not shining in this, in this movie, but this place looks alive and he's going into essentially he's, he's traversing into hell. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly right. He, he is making this conscious choice to go through this passageway and you're right. It does feel it's at its most alive until the Wagner hits its crescendo and the clouds cover the sky, right? I mean, that's end. That's the end of life mm-hmm. in this movie. Everything from here on out is literally coming down the other side of the mountain. Well, yeah. I mean, this is the last time. This is the last sunset that Harker witnesses as himself. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Right. Yep. Yeah, it's yep. interesting, too, because they still show the castle as being what the – Roman Romanians described right or whatever I'm supposed to call them sorry as this Romanis, castle yeah. that is no longer there yeah Romanis yeah. um this castle that's been destroyed but when they show him there it's a full I wouldn't say vibrant but giant castle right mm-hmm, like right. with all the amenities almost it's interesting yeah so he's in kind of like you said he's descended into hell but he's also seeing things right yeah like mm-hmm. he's having illusions about where he is yeah yeah that's yep yeah um yeah that's interesting that whole scene from when he leaves to walk to the castle uh he leaves in the morning and he gets there uh he gets picked up by the carriage the carriage drops him off the carriageman points which i always love and then harker walks and immediately walks up the steps the door opens and the figure of Nosferatu is waiting for him. That whole sequence is six and a half minutes, right? Feels in some ways a lot longer, right? Um, but like <laughs> the studio wanted desperately to cut it. Um, the, really? the, 20, the 20, 20th Century Fox, um, of course, they, dis- the they Ameri- distributed the film in America, and they 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 wanted several things cut for pace. Um, that was one thing that. The Herzog wouldn't cut for pace. Um, and I'm glad he didn't because it, it's beautiful. The whole thing, the, the music, mm. the Popovo vu the, into the Wagner, um, the gorgeous landscapes, the light um, is beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, to me, this movie doesn't even doesn't feel a second too long. You know, like no. it's no beginning to um, end. It just moves, and it's a slow movie, but it's moving the entire time. Right? right? Like everything Absolutely. seems like it can needs to be there yeah absolutely yeah. i appreciate that about that like there's moments where even when it's hard when you're watching a movie with uh subtitles like you're allowed time to absorb things in this film that you need quite frankly mm-hmm. need to absorb mm-hmm. um to enjoy the film yep yeah and that first scene of of dracula at the doorstep he's like man it's creepy <laughs> yeah it's just creepy. it's super creepy i mean i'd, be, I'd shit my pants and i'd run the other way I mean, yeah, like, is that carriage still there <laughs> at this moment you wonder because you know dracula has this kind of far-reaching mind control has he had control of harker in some ways this whole time because we talk about harker's like 
determination to see this mm-hmm. through. How much of that is actually him? I wondered at this point. Like, I think I it think it could be I all him. him. I think it's him. But once he's there, he's he's stuck. Um, yeah. he's, he's, he's under, he's under the thrall, whether he knows it or not. Yeah. Whether I think whether he wanted to run or not, he would be unable. Yeah. yeah. It's just wild. Like the lengths this man will go. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, this <laughs> is the end of his free will. Um, I, in, in my opinion is as, as soon as he makes it to the castle, free, free will is no, no longer other. Well, I guess, I guess you're right. It's not because he does try to escape and he does escape, but he's slowly becoming transformed. He's never. I think he's same. allowed. In a way, he's allowed to mm-hmm. escape. At that well, point. I also think his, the attention has has been diverted from him, and yeah. um, and and there's still part of him, his, it's still part of Harker there, that wants to save Lucy, but that eventually drains from him. Well, it's interesting, and we'll talk about this later. But Dracula, I really think, lets him go, because by the time he gets back to the town he would try to save Dracula over Lucy. That's very true. Right. That, that, that's very possible. Yeah. Yeah. He, he knows, she, he knows how this whole thing works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. she, she smartly deters that, right? Yeah. Like she understands what's going on too. And I think later. that that could also play yeah. into partly why he um, is so, so dismissive of crazy ass Renfield. Right. It says he's like, I got a new one coming. You're getting replaced. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, go go take my go take my rats to another town. Man, eleven thousand yeah. rats, eleven thousand rats, like real rats. I was going to ask about, like, how do you do that? How do you get? How do? Where do you get? A, just get eleven thousand rats. Well, there was twenty two thousand rats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half of them got boiled to death. Yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah, an accident. No, of some variety. No, they they. Uh, <laughs> so Herzog. Do we not wanted, need to talk about this? We well, don't need to talk about this. Uh, sure. Herzog <laughs> says, "I I want gray. I want all these rats to be dyed gray." Yeah. Well, in order to do that, you had to boil oh, their no. their fur. Yeah, yeah. And so they did it alive. Yeah. Um, unfortunate um misstep yeah. in this movie. Yeah. Um. And it didn't, and the dying didn't even look that good. Well, they end up licking it off. Yeah, that yeah. is one of the most insane things I've heard uh-huh. of, like about a production of the film. Yeah, yeah. yeah they bought twenty two thousand rats. They didn't lose one rat in the city. He says though, that was like yeah, a big. R- that was like right. a big point of contention <laughs> with the city. Um, well, I guess like they went to every painstaking like like nettings and everything everywhere they say they didn't lose a rat i i doubt it but <laughs> i mean who, who i, I can't, know i can't count all eleven thousand rats you know who, like, who's the unlucky son of a bitch counting the rats right at the end right. of every day right right yeah oh renfield <laughs> yeah i <laughs> thought you were gonna joke that he ate half of them as like a joke <laughs> when you said there were twenty two thousand, because that would be a total jeff joke renfield ate half of them um <laughs> <laughs> that's how they even paid him. They didn't even need yeah. that many. That's the crazy part. Like, <laughs> no, they could have like gotten away with like a couple hundred. hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it is impressive, though. Those later desolate scenes, scenes. How many rats mm. are everywhere? For yeah. real, it's impressive. I was kind well, of blown away by it. Yeah, it is. It, it is impressive. Like when that last scene in which we see. Right before Lucy goes to to do what she has to do to get rid of Nosferatu or get rid of um, Dracula, she's you know she's she's walking around town and there's those people who had contracted the mm-hmm. uh, the plague are having their their celebratory um, dinner and there are fucking rats everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love that 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 smash cut to from the one guy, you know, explaining to Lucy that, you know, join us. We all got the plague. We want to enjoy ourselves one last time. Smash cut to no one's there, just rats taking yeah. over the table. It's pretty devastating. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. So I think we should, I, obviously we need to talk about that because where Nosferatu goes, so goes the, the black plague, mm-hmm. um, which kind of ties the whole concept of, 
vampirism being uh, an allegory or whatever a plague yeah oh yeah i mean a plague of its own yeah right and it's um spreading death you know Mm -hmm. by way of illness and uh and and what have you but the um it's um when when he begins to take over the ship that's traveling from uh uh from carpathia mountains riga riga was the town that he told him to go take the rats to i knew i was going to remember that <laughs> anyway um but the um you know, and then he's he travels uh, up to vismar the um they mention that all they find are rats on the boat when they when somebody dies or somebody gets um you know disappears suddenly mysteriously they they go looking for a madman who may be stowed away but all they find is a rat right right um which then seem to only multiply once they get to the the city because then the rats just kind of freaking spill out all over the city at this point um i love when the guy is reading the the journal from the captain and he's going through and it's like oh somebody died mysteriously okay somebody else has disappeared mysteriously and then he reads the line where the where the captain asks himself if it's the plague and everybody gets up and just everybody go home (laughs) everybody go to your house close the doors (laughs) peace and out yeah they just they they immediately like look at each other and then they fuck off they get out they get the hell out of there um that cracked me up just because it's like that was the the immediate response to plague um and yeah it it does not take long and there are massive processions of of coffins of dead people Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that scene is also a nightmare too because lucy's begging for help or you know begging somebody to listen to her she knows what's going on she's read the little book about vampires um and she is just trying to tell somebody that she knows what's caused this Mm -hmm. well she encountered count dracula in the bathroom too she's met him yeah Yeah, he came to her and yeah god that's a great scene i mean not just the scene that's just how amazing it is the mirror shot and the shadow but her presence and her standing up to him is so great. Um, backs him down. Like he fucking leaves. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. He, got, he comes in demanding uh, that, that she give him attention. And mm-hmm. she's like, no, no. And if it's not going to be Jonathan, it's going to be nobody at all. Mm-hmm. It's like, get, get out of here. I love it. His idea of love is drinking her blood. Yeah. Which is kind of like an interesting way to look at love is that people are drinking each other oh yeah vampires well, draining the, each other. Par- the parasitic yeah, they, nature of, of relationships yeah yep. yeah yeah i have no doubt that uh, Werner herzog uh, pictures love as being something that is a some sort of a vampiric relationship that basically withers each other away he he does indeed say that the, oh, the, okay, the final go. scene between nosferatu and lucy is the greatest love scene he's ever shot <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it's shot like one. It is, it is it totally is. shot like one. Absolutely. Well, yeah, because it, it's, it's, shot, it's shot like uh, Prince Charming and Sleeping Beauty, you know? Well, and her her uh, nightgown is lifted up a little bit. It, you know, he's he's grabbing onto a boob. I mean, he's yep. like, it, there is a sensuality to For it. For sure. Um, despite it being that he is legitimately killing her. Mm-hmm. Whether there's truth to this or not, in the scene where Count Dracula does confront her in the bathroom asking for her love so that he will return um, Harker to him, Harker. her, which yeah. I, I wonder if he can reverse that process. It doesn't really matter, but it's interesting thing to think about. Like, could he actually return him to her? But it it's she inadvertently wards him off, too, because she has the cross on her mm-hmm. neck, right? Mm-hmm. Or does she... I, I can't tell if she does I, that on purpose, but it's think, all really cool. Like. I think she, I think she does know, and and she, then it gives her a, like a, a confidence of power because she does sort of move, you know, towards him with with her her sort of. She chest. does do that purposefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It's really kind of a powerful. I mean, you've already said this. It's a great scene, but she is so 
very powerful in that scene. Mm-hmm. Like her character oh, acting, the character, everything. It's, it's awesome. Well, her character holds all the cards yeah. in this story. Yeah. Um, you well, know, he could it, take it from her if he wanted to. And that's part of what him being like a, having a different, like if he was the monster from the original Nosferatu, yeah. obviously he wouldn't be asking for this. He'd just be taking it. Or he'd just, but, he'd, yeah, he'd just enchant her with his, his powers. Right. 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 Like the, the, the old Lugosi way, you know? Yeah. It's an interesting dynamic to this monster that sometimes some things he almost tries to earn, Mm-hmm. even though he's trying to give himself leverage by holding Harker, you know, like he's, sure. he thinks he's putting himself in a position of power to where he can just ask for things. And she's well, you like, know, I no, think it, I think my it, love no will intended. bring him back. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Go ahead. No, you don't. No, sorry. I was interrupting. Um, I think it also in part of the pun harkens back to, you know, when Harker and, <laughs> and Dracula <laughs> are, 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 yeah. are, are, are Harkering. Um, yeah. It, it, because is there that scene, Nosferatu is very much Dracula is very much um, uh, expressing his loneliness, right? Yeah, he's he's lamenting his life. He's lamenting well, having no one to share it with, having yeah, to he's, con- right, that right. can never grow old and die. Right. So I don't think that he wants a companion that is captive. Right. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And he. It's weird to me how he's he feels doomed. He is doomed, right? And he, he talks about it a lot. Like, whenever he talks almost, he talks about how difficult a life it is mm-hmm. to live alone or having no end. Like, the real tragedy of life is it not ending. Right. It makes me wonder why he doesn't take it from himself. I, I wonder could. the same. I wonder the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like he's almost. I, that's I definitely really become a, so that's skip. definitely become a more modern vampire trope of of kind of releasing yourself. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, but it's never it's ne- doesn't seem like in the classical vampire story that that it's ever really considered as a as a possibility. I don't right. know why, but yeah, he felt there. Like Count Dracula feels like he's on the precipice of. <laughs> of doing it himself if he could. And yeah, it's interesting. Well, it's an interesting I'm, dynamic. I I'm wonder, not entirely sure if, I mean, he may not be able to, there are a lot. Of I wonder rules. about that too. There are a lot of rules for him. I mean, it has to be like, <clears throat> what a, a pure, a pure woman who lures him and keeps him past dawn in, and in, into the sunlight to, and then, into the ignore the call of the cock. Right, 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 and then and then has to be staked. <laughs> yeah, to Harker, that's a lot. There's yeah. a lot going on. So, there, so yeah. that's the problem, right? He's got to be staked. So maybe he can come in with, with an agreement for someone to help kill him, but that doesn't seem like Dracula's style. <laughs> to Harker back to the fly. <laughs> to Harker back to it. Yep, go back to it. <laughs> it feels like that's the. And I'm gonna use another pun accidentally, but now on purpose. <laughs> it's the poetry of the stake. Right. Yeah. Like he, I don't think those conditions really need to be met. I think they're the way somebody fantasi- fantasizes be. or it could be. Yeah. But, but maybe, again, we're, I mean, we're not, I we're not operating here. It we're operating in a, in a movie also that is very purposefully anti-realism, right? Like it is. Right. Yeah. It's like dream logic. Yeah. almost. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. the more you try to deconstruct the rules of all of this, the less, the less impact the movie has. Yeah. yeah. I mean, don't forget right. that Agreed. the original 1922 version, he went poof when the yeah. sun came up. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, there was a, there was a lot less going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It was just like, Hey, but that was um, also, that, that was also a creature. It was very intent on self-preservation as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, um, no. So back to what, what I was saying about like when she was going out into the street and saying, basically like, I know what's wrong. I know what's going on. I know what's caused this. I know what the evil is. And, they are not just ignoring her. It's almost mm-hmm. like she's blocking. She's not there. Yeah. Right. Or that they are just all acting on, on autopilot, mm-hmm. you know, like they're right. Th- they don't run into her, but they don't stop for her. You know, it's like, you can kind of understand it. Right. 
I mean, civilization has completely destabilized around them. There, there is mass death. It's total chaos. Most of these people are probably facing their own mortality right now. It's like so you got some lunatic lady claiming that you know this vampire is the reason for for it all. That's hard to believe, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like in any other story where one of the pallbearers is the main character, she's the crazy lady that runs onto the street that everyone's like, get the fuck out of here. Right. You know, like she right. she is that we're just focused on her. Right. And it, and, and yeah. they've probably seen all of sor- sor- sorts of forms of of um, panic at this point as well. Right. It's right. like and you're numb to that, too. Right. Yeah. It's wild. What the way the plague, and I wonder, like, obviously the plague is there. Dracula is not killing all of them, but he probably killed a lot of them, right? Like, well, he's here's what I think. Here's what I think because it, it it seems that the only person he kills is Mina. Um, I think he's waiting for the plague to destabilize th- all possibility of repercussion on him. No government no society, no civilization, so that he can pick off the survivors. I agree with that. I like that idea. Yeah. I like that idea because, a lot. Because he sends Renfield to prepare the next town. Yeah. Yep. That he's he's gonna just going to move from town to town. Yep. Yeah. Like the plague would. Right. Yeah. Right. Like he's follow, He's going to follow yeah. the plague. He's like, oh, you, you survived the plague. I'm next. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like Renfield is almost the, uh, the piper, the Pied Piper. Yeah. Well, yeah. he's he's in more way, he's well, just he's working a, in reverse. Uh, he's <laughs> well, it's more than that. He's a herald. A herald? That too. Yeah, he's a herald. Herald. Yeah. Oh, herald. Yes. He's yes. the gossip. He's the yeah. gossip. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. In so, yeah, he's, you know, he is heralding the the coming of death, mm-hmm. which has a physical form as the the uh that Dracula will eventually kill the the rest of the town. Mm-hmm. Um Right. Yeah. It's, and he'll eventually, the, the Dracula will take over the earth, right? Like, that's. Well, I mean, however many. That what will we'll, happen yeah, eventually. I mean, eventually, yes. I mean, every town, he probably creates a couple of Draculas. And then if he, he leaves goes, one in every town. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's seriously. Like, it's like, it's like the mayor in every town. Yeah. It's like the what? Yeah. The mayor. Like the mayor. Yeah, just the leave mayor. the Dracula mayor. Your Mayor Dracula. This no, 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 no. The Burgermeister died. <laughs> the Burgermeister. I love he, that word. He died um, from the plague. So he did. You're going to have to appoint a new Dracula mayor. A new, a new Burgermeister. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird, the comedy at the end of this movie. But I'll bring that up. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. yes yeah, indeed. So, yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're getting pretty close there. But yeah, uh, Jonathan eventually comes home and he's uh, he's he's out of his mind. Um, he can't remember Lucy, right? But he spends right. most of his trip home desperately, you know, like begging somebody to help him because Lucy's in trouble mm-hmm. because right. he knows that he is sending death to the town that Lucy's at. stop the black coffins is his yeah. mantra, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, stop the black coffins and Lucy's in, in danger are the two, but he's forgotten he- all that. Yeah, he's forgotten all that once he gets home. He arrives yeah, at the he doorstep. Yeah, he remembers where he Oh, thank God. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when you know this story is not the same as Nosferatu 1922, right? Because right. Yeah. Parker and Lucy stop Dracula together. You're pretty certain it's not going to happen here. I mean, in most, the way in, yeah, in most versions of Dracula, um, you know, it's, Hale, it's Van Helsing, Lucy... Harker and the other suitor. I can't remember his name. The American who oh, team up. Uh, um, um, oh, damn it. I'll it's, I've, it's, I, okay, it's not my brain right now. Um, it's not important, though. But um, but yeah, yeah. We, no, usually it, there's, is, it is important. <laughs> there's a team up, right? And yeah, they take that. They take Dracula down together. Exactly. Quincy. Yeah. Quincy. Thank yeah. you. But um, this is, yeah. <laughs> this is a love story, right? So focuses right. on one on one instead. Well, of- and there there have been other um there there have been other like the um, Hammer Dracula Harker was killed. Uh, mm, he sure. was actually a vampire sure. hunter. Yeah. Uh, he was he was off in the first he was like used the um um being a real estate agent as his way to get the Dracula. Um Yeah. Yeah. It's the other doctor 
that takes over um, in that one. But yeah, I mean, but but yeah, there is usually a stand-in for Jonathan, a stand-in for uh, for Mina. Then there's a Van, uh, always a Van Helsing, right? And that's the yeah. funny thing about this Van Helsing, and it, it makes it makes somewhat makes sense. I don't remember how, the 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 doctor character in the original Nosferatu. Did it play? Did he play much of a role? Nope. No, as he does in the book, um, pretty prominent role in the book. But um, but yeah, it's like I mean, Van Helsing is famous for a reason, right? He wouldn't yeah, be yeah. for this movie or but, Nosferatu. But Herzog, <laughs> but Herzog totally subverts that character, and I don't even think he realizes he's doing it because he's not familiar with the archetype of Van Helsing in the Hammer films specifically. Right. Right. Or that's or, fascinating I mean, to me. I mean, if you go back to to the thirty two Dracula or the thirty one Dracula, that's, I mean, that's really where the archetype of mm-hmm. badass Van Helsing. Yeah. Although it's there, and he'd never uh, seen it. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's it, it's to, you're, you're tempted, I think, in some ways, to read his version as Van of, as, of Van Helsing as an intentional subversion, but it's not. It's totally. Just, well, we don't have time for this. <laughs> right. Right. And he wants me, I'm sorry, he wants Lucy. And again, it's about that love story. And he wants Lucy to be the badass. And she is. I mean, she confronts Van Helsing and she tries to convince him one last time that this is what's happening. And he just won't hear it. He's very much a skeptic of science. He's, he's, he's like, science has proved, you know, that this, these things don't exist. This is a fairy tale you're talking about. And she's finally, I mean, she's resigned. And I wrote down a bunch of ag- adjectives because I think it's one of Ajani's most finest moments in this film that she expresses, I think, with equal parts resignation, conviction, disappointment, and bravery when she says, I guess I'll have to do this alone. It's a beautiful moment. Um, it's, it's very really sad. Yeah. 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 And I think it were. I mean, this movie earns that moment really mm-hmm. well, too, mm-hmm. because because you don't believe that anyone else would come to her aid right. at this point. So right. Van Helsing all of a sudden at this moment was like, you know what? You're right. You'd be like, ah, oh, that's kind of a cop out. Yeah. That's yeah. what would make maybe a hammer Dracula film and not a Werner. Her- no, no diss on hammer. Right. But, you know, I think you know what I mean. I know what you mean. And yeah, I mean, she shows him the book, everything, and he's just not having it. He's like this, this, this is contrary to everything I believe in science. Right, and it's really kind of appropriate for our times. I'm on Van Helsing's side in a lot of ways, but I'd be <laughs> wrong in this instance, <laughs> right? Well, yeah, this like where the fantastic does exist. Yeah. Yes, right. Yes, right. The extraordinary um, circumstance. But he is so rigid that you know, here she is, and he's like, "Look, lady, you know, it's like we're going to deal with this the scientific way." And not some hokey, hocus pocus sort of way, you know, we're going to do it my way or no way. Shut the hell up. And she's just like, well, fine, I'll do it without you. Yeah. Um, but also, I mean, of course, Van Helsing hasn't come face to face with a Dracula. Right. You know, he hasn't, he, he hasn't come face to face with the monster like she has. Um, so in a way, I do understand his um his reluctance but yeah i mean he's <laughs> i mean in the book and in every other movie that van helsing abraham van helsing shows up um he knows what a vampire is in fact right. he is oftentimes the one who says by the way what you got here is a vampire problem right right yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well it's not until he sees mina's body that he starts to believe he sees the puncture right. wound. He yeah. and he starts. He starts. He finally sees something, right? Um, it's like the doubting Thomas, right? He has to see see it to believe it, and he finally does. Um, damn doubting Thomas. Damn. Doubting Thomas the tank engine. Yeah, I mean it's it's proof at this point, right, that something is <clears throat> biting the necks of people and taking their blood instead of right. Dracula under the cover of the plague. Like yeah, he specifically about. says like, like if this plague like, wasn't there, then help this person did she didn't die of the plague. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yep. One hundred percent. Oh yeah, you can and you if, can yeah. approach her because she's not yeah, you're right. not gonna catch what she died of. Yeah. It's surprising she didn't she catch could. the Yeah, it, it it's surprising she didn't 
contract the plague at other times, like hanging around those drinking people. The, who, the, wine, the wine from the guy. It's like, no, thank you, sir. Yeah. And uh, yeah, pass on that. Unless I'm thinking about poisoning myself with uh, for Dracula. Well, she's going to poison his coffin with some consecrated hosts. That's one thing she's going to do. Yeah, That's she true. does do she, that. She does mm-hmm. do that. She also uh, puts that around Jonathan to prevent him from from her doing what she's going to do. Right. Right. Um, I'm stupid too, because when I watched that scene, I thought she was trying to keep Dracula away from Harker uh, until later well, where I was yeah. like, Oh, this makes sense. More sense to me now. Yeah. But yeah. And yeah, cause, he, also, Cause he gets a little goofy at the end. Mm-hmm. He's um, goofy for half this movie, but yeah. <laughs> well, but I mean like goofy, goofy, like, you know, like having the lady dust it up so you can sneak out and sidestep like, out of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, he's, he's he's full on um, he's full on Nosferatuing at that point. <laughs> yeah, he's a vaudevillian Nosferatu. Yeah. <laughs> Nos Nosferatuian. Yeah, I like oh, I like. <laughs> will you now? Vod Ferratu. <laughs> That's what I would have gone with. There it is. There it is. Vod Ferratu. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so we're pretty much there, right? Like she determines that she has to do it herself. Mm-hmm. She she puts the consecrated host, like you talked about, around Harker, so he cannot move. She goes to her bed in her sexiest outfit from you know whatever <laughs> era. That's uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's not even showing off her ankles. <laughs> no, <laughs> it does eventually. Well, um, yeah, sure, but but she she's basically inviting him Mm -hmm. and he comes and she does a little stalling by pushing him away you know she's like we need to extend this as long as possible and basically invites him to kill her right yeah he feeds on her for like hours it seems like she would have lived had she not been like no there's still there's still right. time i need to grab his hands i need to touch his back i need to draw him back in yep, exactly. do that whole um yeah he would have left and he would have lived and she would have lived but that wasn't the plan yep. nope yep no nope. and yeah like you we alluded we didn't even allude to we said it it's like a love scene mm-hmm. right and she won't let her lover leave the bed mm-hmm. basically um and which when she wakes she up didn't the ignore the cock like he did <laughs> right <laughs> well when when oh God. sorry i had to get that in there <laughs> when she at the beginning of the movie when she wakes up the jonathan comes over into her bed so in a way her story begins and ends with another man in her bed right mm-hmm. or yeah. a man or you know the most yes. important man of the of the moment in her bed but yeah, me being a, a first time watcher of this, which I will revisit this probably a lot of Octobers because I really liked it a lot. Um, I expected Kinski to just explode in the sun. Right, right. And it's really I want to see an exploding Klaus Kinski. <laughs> it's got to well, be out there somewhere. He, he did plenty of exploding. Just yeah. that kind. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> But he was you, he was known for his volatile <clears throat> excuse me volatile temper. Yeah, and he he's yeah. great in this. Like his acting at the end here is really good. And I did want to do another callback to something you mentioned with makeup earlier, Jeff. Um, when he leans into the sun, it, at first it almost seems like a gaff because you could see his skin clearly. Mm-hmm. He looks like Klaus Kinski. I'm like, hey, where'd the makeup go? Where'd the makeup around his eyes go? Where do? It's like almost like he's alive again for a brief instant mm-hmm. before he dies. Right? Like he looks natural mm-hmm. in the sun, and then he. I don't know what it does to him. Does it drain him of his power and he just becomes catatonic? Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because like, I, I feel like if you just threw him out the window, that all day in the sun was going to be bad news for him. But, but Van Helsing has to finish him off uh, with the steak. And he's like, oh, I got to go find a steak and a hammer. Steak and a hammer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I wonder if, if when night falls, he would gradually come back to himself because i don't know it, man his it burns <clears throat> out as his his it does burn out as his his yeah you're right he's blind that's for sure and it's it's almost like he's sucking in the the daylight and it's eating him from inside yeah yeah, yeah and then so, he he seems already dead but he's more like he's frozen 
Like he's like he's one of those bodies at the beginning of the movie and the, the real life mummies from Mexico. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about a brief moment of comedy at the it's end. It's possible here. though if he were able to feed somehow that he could come back. Or if that's somebody how, that's fed how the him. hammer movies do it. Yeah. If somebody yeah. came to him and opened their wrist and gave right. him, like, right. like total vampire mouth. trope. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, Christopher Lee knows that very well. He, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> is that but the, there's the, this, the which one is that the, the blood? All of them. Well, yeah. All of them. It had something to do with a blood ritual. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. But we have the I don't even know who this guy is. The little. The little old man oh, who's like the little old comedy. Old lady. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. comedy. Is it a lady? Is I it? I don't know. No, okay. it's an old man. All right, so so let's let's set it up. Um, yeah, please. This is right after this is right after Van Helsing stakes, um, Dracula. Yep. And he comes out and he tells he tells two people that seem to be in charge of things still what he did. And maybe one of them is the Burgermeister. No, and there is no Burgermeister. No, Burgermeister's dead, right? Yeah, pretty much these are the only people left in town. There are only two. Yeah, these are really, truly the only people of any authority left there's, in town. There's a policeman, a <clears throat> carriage driver, mm-hmm. Jonathan, the maid, and uh, Van Helsing, I think, are the only five people left in this town. Yeah, and the guy <laughs> wants and the guy wants the 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 carriage the, driver, the, the carriage driver to, to arrest yeah. him and take him to jail. And what happens? So the old man's like, well, where am I going to take him? <laughs> who's going to watch him? Who's, yeah, who's going to watch him? <laughs> he's like, well, there's arrest no guards him. there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, just arrest him. Do I have, can I have a weapon? But it's really, <laughs> and I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He's like, I don't have a weapon. Like, yeah. I cannot freely, I cannot make this man who's bigger than me and holding a weapon go into this incarceration guy does not want yeah. to be a cop <laughs> no. right but it's very comedic is it not is it just that guy or do you think that's like a purposefully kind of comedic it's it's played for comedy i, th- yeah. I think so yeah it's, it's so it's, weird but it's it's, cool. it's kind of <laughs> like a it's kind of like a breath right you can finally kind of like this tragic thing has happened but it's almost like you need that moment but this is to also recover. happening in the midst of a twist oh yeah in which jonathan is ratted well in the town of rats has ratted out van helsing for mm-hmm. killing dracula yeah. yes he, he yeah. scream he essentially screams bloody murder yeah at this point and that's when they come in to arrest van helsing and um <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so here's my problem. My really, my only problem with this entire movie. It's a huge one. If you're talking about the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, it is a huge one. It, it's why. All right. If if um Harker is now the new Dracula, right? How why, can he ride off in the sunset? Why, how can he ride off into the sun? Exactly. He's, what he's what wearing, do you got, Jeff? He's he's wearing a, a cloak. He's like he's uh, he's hooded up. Why the fuck did Nosferatu do this? I'm not really buying it because he's full of hubris. Dracula's got Dracula's second superpower is hubris. I'm going to say that's a problem. I, I know what you are saying. And I think maybe that was the reason they tried to write it off, but I, it's really my only problem with this movie <laughs> is him riding off in the sunset. If it was nighttime, I would have zero issue with it. And it would have been like just as powerful. Agreed. It's possible. It's a beautiful shot. Well, yeah, the other shot, thing is, the other it's thing the wrong, is it's also, the wrong time of day. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the other the other thing. Now, I'll offer you up another suggestion that, that's probably better than the than the Dracula's hubris, but he does <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> is that it's possible that Jonathan isn't fully turned? I mean, he I, is. I, I he is basically that. on his way, but he's not quite as pale. He's he doesn't have the monster ears in full effect. He's not. He has you know, the he, nails though. He's got he the does. nails and he's got the teeth and the teeth. But other than that, he's kind of like a baby vampire, and <laughs> will be able to handle some. So now, of course, if that's about as close as I can get to accepting. However, yeah. there's another. I've got a third thing. Oh, because uh-oh. my number two thing also polls if if um if herzog read the book he knows the dracula can be out in the daytime right right number right. two that's number two number three is that there was a whole song and fucking dance to kill dracula true that harker is not a part of he is not being lured by a woman 
to to get a little boob and a little leg action and then get staked and then okay so there's a there's but but it still doesn't play right because because dracula clearly avoids the daytime right yes i i read that whole song and dance that you were talking about as it took someone to fool him into right. the sun right. not that he needed these conditions to be met but that's that was that was what i what i took it as well because it's the only thing that could could conceivably fool him to to staying past his bedtime <laughs> yes <laughs> then, then, I, then i fall back to either number one or number two <laughs> i like number two best um okay. yeah yeah and i i even i considered that and didn't accept it at the time but it is probably the most plausible mm-hmm. reason for sure so he's a little baby nosferatu he's a nosferatu <laughs> yeah. baby baby nos he's a baby nosferatito <laughs> there you go <laughs> like it. Yeah. all right well that's, that's a good, good movie. movie good fucking movie right Jeez. yeah i was yeah i was very pleasantly surprised with it i expected way more i mean i've seen enough klaus kinski films and no werner herzog enough to expect craziness yeah i guess and you really don't get it's very it's very subdued in its weirdness that Didn't, that uh... is a very much a credit to klaus kinski or no, to um werner herzog because well, kinski wanted to play it more energetic yeah that's what i was just about to say kinski wanted to go over the top and herzog's like no no and i think he i think he placated him by taking takes of uh, of a higher level he he would he he would he would actually he would actually like let him get all his energy out either through just arguing with him or letting him like act things out on in a scene and then he would finally when he when he got him to the point where he was kind of like worn out he would be like, okay, now let's try and do it my way. <laughs> yeah. And he would be so tired, he didn't really have any choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell um, you what, the take at the table with Harker when he's eating, when he first arrives, the way that Kinski is looking at him oh, yeah. from the food to the to him and like mm-hmm. just his facial acting mm-hmm. in that scene, I'm like, man, this is like his eyes yeah. brought or nearing like masterful. Yeah. It is really good. It truly really, is. Really it truly is a great performance. But yes, it was a team effort. <laughs> yeah, I get it. There was um, something funny in the commentary. Um, Herzog said that, yeah, Koskinski was in you know hundreds of movies and about 250 of them. He was only in it for maybe one or two scenes. And the reason was because no one on set could ever st- tolerate him for longer than a day or two. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> he's like most, he's, he said most of the cast the rest of the cast were, were just uh, came to him constantly. Like, I can't work with him. This is insane. He's a maniac. But Werner, Her, Werner Herzog, for whatever reason, was the only person who could really tame the beast and get these amazing, really, truly amazing performances out of him. Yep. Um, it's, um, yeah, and, and Kinski is a, he's an interesting and I say that loosely. Mm, yeah, guy. Um, there's there's a lot there's a lot of really grody stuff um, around him. Yeah, he died of a heart attack in '91. Although I'm not saying that Herzog maybe didn't have something to do with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, only his son attended his funeral because yeah. his daughters have yeah pretty significant issues with yep. uh, with their father. Yes, yes, they do. Um, pretty gross ones, but yep. anyway. Yep. Um, so yeah. Um, overall, though, I mean, Werner Herzog. Um. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a masterpiece. Honestly, it's it's on most days. I think it's my favorite Dracula. Um, it's just really, really good. You're, you're it definitely that, it definitely sets up that spooky tone you might want for this time of year everyone so if you've not seen it or even if you have and you want to revisit it it'll get you it'll get you in a spooky mood that is for sure 100 Agree. Yeah, this is a uh, biography of death <laughs> that's what i'd call it put that put accurate. that in quotes and slap it on the box <laughs> <laughs> pull quote biography of death Yep, Jeffrey Arbuckle. I just want to go by Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey. Anyway. 
<laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, what, what do we got? What do we got next what, week? What we got going on here? Next we're do something week, different is, next we're going to do something different. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that we talked about as we were on our vacation and trying to figure out what we're going to do when we come back and how this is going to work. Um, one of the things we thought about doing was doing what I don't know. The best I could describe it are like theme episodes. We used to do theme months or we have done theme months. You're obviously in a theme month right now, but this is down on the episode level talking about concepts and ideas, not necessarily a movie. So to kind of celebrate spooky month, uh, we are going to talk about horror tropes and the various, um, uh, what's the other word? Um, tropes and uh, anyway, things that, that <laughs> I uh, come tropes, up with it, cliches. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Um, things that you see all the time. My guess is that we'll probably end up uh, mostly talking about more recent stuff because that's where a lot of those kind of tropes were kind of born with the slasher era. 80s horror. Yeah, 80s and 90s. Um, but uh, no, I think this is just going to be kind of a nice, you know, just having a having a good old conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a good old conversation. So that <clears throat> is going to be October twenty sixth. That will be our kind of uh, big wrap up to the uh, the whole spooky month. Spooky month. Spookies. Speaking of spookies, <laughs> <laughs> next month Monday on Monster Mondays. I'm looking at the 1926 Faust. Ooh. Um, because, I mean, the, the, the devil counts as a monster, right? Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, Mes- indeed. Mephistopheles counts. According to some. Well, I mean. Some worship the man, but yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that is coming next uh, Monday. And the Monday after that is Halloween. And that is just so happens i didn't didn't make this happen but just so happens that that is the 200th monster mondays and uh it is uh, i'm going to talk about that 1922 nosferatu awesome Sweet. um because i figure you can't do much better than that for number 200 right right so it's the 100th anniversary it's it's a dracula it's the it's, granddaddy, right? I mean, pretty much. I mean, sure. So, yeah, so that's going to happen. Um, you can find all of that film seizure business at uh, podcast providers like SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, and Audible. And uh, you can also listen to it on YouTube. We upload the, the business there. Um, so both of those shows are there, but I would either subscribe to one of those places or follow us at Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Just search for at film seizure. And um, yeah, in addition, again, more spooky month action this Friday uh, on my website, bmovieanima.com. I will be talking about the mid nineties classic Jacko. And, uh, I mean, I'm always up for a jack-o'-lantern <laughs> monster. And this Saturday is the uh, is technically the Halloween special for B-Movie Anima, the series. However, it's the start of a very short uh, fourth season of B-Movie Anima, the series, um, where I'm going to do a monthly episode for, for the next six months. Um, and that is... Trick or Treats is the name of that movie that I've got for Saturday. It's an 80 slasher. So should be fun times. Just go over to bmovieanima.com. You'll find all that stuff. So I think we can ride off into the night in our black cloaks and our baby Dracula teeth. (laughs) Indeed. 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 Until next uh, week. Yes, indeed. So until then. When we talk about some cliches and tropes, I am Jeff Arbuckle. I'm Chuck Moore. I'm Jason Oliver, and you have been listening to Film Seizure. <laughs>